be sure to register for the online class I teach on uh, on the weekend. On Saturdays, it is Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Um, I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. And we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. So you can use this information with your children. Also, I would say the content is uh, PG-13. And uh, it's very interactive. You know, we have a ton of information in it. It's very visual. Uh, we deal with ancient Africa. We deal with the Nile Valley region of Africa, ancient civilizations. And we go through our history and deal with, um, you know, what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Okay, let me flip over this here. So uh, I'll post the link again. You can register for the class. Then also it's at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, so uh, some of the things we deal with in the online course, we deal with um, the 800-year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. Uh, we deal with uh, some of the origins of Freemasonry, and we deal with uh, similarities between the layout of Washington, D.C. and uh, ancient Kemet also. Uh, Tony Browder deals with this uh, a lot in Egypt on the Potomac. Uh, Browder deals with this a lot in Egypt on the Potomac also, and that's one of the books we use in the class. So we deal with uh, the first Holy Trinity of Asar, Aset, and Heru, who the Greeks called Isis, Osiris, and Horus. And we, we, we deal with a timeline of history as well, thousands of years that lead up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place, okay? Um, and when we look at the Tekken that comes out of the mythology of Asar, Aset, and Heru, the Greeks called it an obelisk. There were approximately 1,200 Tekkenu built in ancient Kemet, um, but only about a dozen are found today in Egypt. Uh, and many of the Tekkenu removed from Egypt are now in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, London, England, Paris, France, Berlin, Germany, New York, New York, Rome, Italy, Vatican City, and elsewhere throughout the world. The Tekkenu are now called obelisks by their new owners and few know their origin or that they symbolize the resurrection of the African king of Sar. Uh, if you read uh, Egypt on the Potomac, uh, page 17, Browder breaks this down there. Now, I'm gonna just deal with a couple of quick things here because I'm having some technical difficulties here. So, the word mason is derived from the Latin words mass and sun. Uh, mason means child of light and expresses the desire to pursue light, which is a metaphor for the sun, which symbolizes knowledge. The term child of light or sons and daughters of light was first used to identify students who had completed 42 years of study in the temples of ancient Kemet. Many Masonic temples were modeled after the temples of ancient Kemet, places where light or knowledge was imparted in a series of steps or degrees. OK, now, if we look at uh, so there's over 200 slides in in the class and we, you know, we do a PowerPoint presentation. I have over 50 articles that we reference uh, various books. You don't have to buy any of the books to be able to follow along in class. But we go through and um, look at his. We go through and look at history, everything from the judgment scene to, um, and then if we go through, let's see here. 
We look at some of the origins of Christmas as well and why Christmas is celebrated on December 25th. One thing that's important to understand uh, is the patron saints. We look at um, center class and St. Nicholas because St. Nick, St. Nick, St. Nicholas was a real saint. He was uh, an African man, fourth century uh, Myra in what's present day Turkey, Greek Orthodox bishop born in 280 AD common era, born to a uh, wealthy parent and gave away his inheritance to the poor. And one of the things we talk about is um, center class who is the religious uh, is a religious character that we see in Holland and the Netherlands, things like this center class in Dutch means St. Nicholas. Okay. Center class in uh, the Dutch language means St. Nicholas. And we we're going to see um, that is going to be this religious figure of center class that wears, wears uh, red and white. We're going to see that is uh, this religious figure that then um, gets transformed into Santa Claus. Okay, it's this religious figure of center class that gets transformed into Santa Claus, and Santa Claus wears red and white. Also, we're going to see that um, center class gets introduced by the Dutch to the U.S., to the colonies in the early 1700s, even before the American Revolutionary War. You have an influx of Dutch coming in and they bring uh, center class with them, okay? And center class has a um, a sidekick who's a Moor named Joata Piet, Black Pete. So we get into this mythology uh, in, in the class and this deals with the dehumanization, the, the, the uh, dehumanization of the Moors also. Okay. Uh, Joie de Piet means Black Pete. And, and one of the versions of the story, Black Pete is a, is a Moor who is uh, really a, a slave to center class. Some say a servant, some say a slave to center class. But Black Pete was introduced um, in a children's book in 18, right about 1850. And, and you have uh, this um, parade of people dressing up as Black Pete in uh, the Netherlands around December 5th. Uh, and they're wearing, uh, they, put, they put on uh, uh, blackface makeup, Afro wigs, red lipstick on their lips, things like this to imitate Black Pete, Go, usually gold hoop earrings as well to imitate Black Pete, but this is very dehumanizing. And there's been, each year, there's more and more backlash against this uh, celebration that takes place. All right, Dominique said, thanks for being consistent. This, this ain't easy, trust me. Um, so, we deal with the origins of the, you know, Immaculate Conception story and the virgin birth and the adoration, uh, things like this. These are very ancient stories that date back to at least uh, 3300 BC in ancient Nubia, Ta-Nehisi. These are stories retold over and over again, adapted to various people's cultures. Uh, we deal with why Christmas is celebrated on December 25th as well. So we go throughout history to understand what happened to us. We look at the, uh, you know, even before slavery existed, we deal with the African presence in the Americas and in South America going back at least 56,000 years ago. We look at some work from Dr. David M. Hotel, who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. Some of you all have seen the interviews I've done with him. It's a friend of mine. I've interviewed him a number of times. Some of you have heard the um seen some of the interviews some of you have read, have read his book his new book is out his second one the first americans were africans uh revised and expanded 
we do with some we look at some of the pre-christian origins of christmas as well the uh festival of yule uh saturnalia the roman festival of saturnalia the persian festival of mithra these are these are precursors to the christian celebration of christmas okay so you, you you know historical events don't happen in a vacuum they are the culmination of a sequence of historical events that uh take place and we have to have we have to understand how all this is connected all right we look at the um film black panther and the african influence in the film black panther there were 11 different african cultures that we see represented in the film black panther um and when we look at when you see the panther deity of 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 um of bast the 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 black panther the 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 black actual panther deity that they say watches over the people of wakanda uh well bast or bastet in ancient kemet was that ancient egyptian goddess or ancient kemetic goddess or netter worshipped in the form of a lioness and later a cat uh she was a, a netra of warfare in lower kemet and worshiped as early as the second dynasty or around 2890 bce before the common era when we look at the um when we look at wakanda in the comic books and wakandan wakandan religion and its tribes the religion of the Wakandan people, and Wakanda is made up of 18 different um, clans of people, 18 different uh, cultures, okay? Um, you have the uh, Jabari tribe, you have the Crocodile uh, tribe, things like that. Uh, Wakanda, even though it's one nation, the different ethnic groups in Wakanda, there's 18 different tribes that make up the people of Wakanda. So the religion of the Wakandan people first developed through the pilgrimage to the land in their conflict with the originators, the gods of Wakanda formed uh, from the heroes of humans within the tribe. Ascending to the status of a god, these heroes became known as the Orisha. Now the Orisha are the name, that's, that's what the deities in the uh uh spiritual system of ifa practice amongst the yoruba in nigeria is called the orisha the, the 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 deities the forces of nature just like the netaru they're called the orisha taking the names koku thoth now thoth is what the greeks call the Huti. okay the Huti is the one that delivers the annunciation to the virgin all set that she's going to give birth to by uh give birth to uh uh heru who the greeks called horus what you call an immaculate conception that's the Huti, who is the netter of divine articulation of speech and science and mathematics things like this that's the Huti that has the 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 ibis the deity with the ibis head that's the Huti that delivers the immaculate conception okay well the greeks called the Huti thoth So you have the names Koku, Thoth, Bast, coming from Bastet, from ancient Kemet, Mujaji, and Pata, which is one of the original Netter, Pata, coming from ancient Kemet, and Niyami. The Orishas' origin, origins date back to the ancient Egyptian beings known as the Ennead. Now, this is straight from the Black Panther comic book. This is straight from the 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 world of wakanda the Ennead is greek which means nine it refers to the original nine netaru the Ennead. so when you get into um so this is just a few other things that we deal with in the class <laughs> the class is deep that's why it's 10 weeks right what are the Ennead? Ennead means group of nine in greek in kemet they were called pest uh, uh pest jet the nine Neturu were Atom, the sun, Shu, air, tough nut, moisture, Geb, earth, and Nut, sky, Asar, and Aset, Seth, and Nephetus. Okay. 
You read pages uh, 274 to 277 of Ancient Egypt by Lorna Oakes and uh, Lucia Galen, and also Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization. They break this down, dealing with the idiot. Well, that's all in the Black Panther comic book. So when we deal with the Black Panther and, the, and especially the movie Black Panther, uh, I've done lectures on this. I mean, the, the, the uh, Black Panther, man, reconnects us to African history and culture. It's a deep movie. I had to do a lot of research to really be able to do my lectures dealing with the film Black Panther. Okay, so, um, and then the mo the language spoken in the film Black Panther is Isi Kosa. Isi Kosa is a Bantu language. All right, just like Kiswahili is a Bantu language as well. The language spoken in the film Black Panther is a real language. It's Isi Kosa, and it's spoken in Southern Africa. Okay, so we deal with different um, African uh, uh, nations and civilizations like Carthage, okay? And we deal with Hannibal Barca, okay? Hannibal in the Battle of Cana, 216 BC, and what happened to Carthage? Carthage destroyed by Rome, uh, 146 BCE, before the Common Era. Uh, we deal with um, uh, Tana Hesse, we deal with... Uh, uh, great Zimbabwe. Uh, it's a it's a ton of information that we deal with in the class. Okay, so this is a 10 week online class. Now we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. So you can go back and watch it anytime. Okay. You can go back and watch it as much as you want to. And even after the 10 week online course is over with, you still these are actual slides from the class, by the way. After the 10 week online class is over with, you can um to have access to the full class you can watch it as much as you want to right it's a, and we deal with the moors uh the africans known as the moors the going into the iberian peninsula the day known as spain and portugal in 711 a.d and they fight against the vandals and the visigoths and i say i wish we had never taught them okay because everything we taught taught the more taught um the europeans came back to kick us in the behind George G.M. James talks about the Moors and stolen legacy. He said the Moors were the custodians of the ancient Egyptian mystery system. The Moors are taking the teachings from the Nile Valley region of Africa into Europe. And this is going to bring Europe out of the dark ages. And when you, I mean, like when you look at Columbus, Columbus is using nautical instruments based upon technology that the Moors introduced into Europe. All that stuff came back on us. The Moors introduced something called a called a fire stick. Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay talks about this. They introduced something called a fire stick, which is a long stick that fire fire one projectile. The, the Europeans are going to take this and create the first, really the first firearm in Europe in uh, mid 14th century AD, right around 1346 AD. So when they're when they're going into these lands and conquering people, they're taking firearms, the cannon, the Bible, alcohol, disease, all types of things. All this stuff comes back to all that all all of this comes back to kick us in the behind. Um okay. So then we look at, we go through and look at a timeline of history so we can put all this history in chronological order, all right? We deal with uh, General Tariq, Tariq Ibn Ziyad, 711 AD, who goes into the Iberian Peninsula and the Moors fight against the battles in the Visigoths and where they land uh, is, is it's uh, called uh, Tariq's Mountain or Jebel Tariq also known as Gibraltar or the Rock of Gibraltar, named after Tariq Ibn Ziyad. We talk about St. Maurice, the, 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 uh, the Moor, uh, the Black Moor St. Maurice, who became a patron saint to Germany. So we have to, especially during African-American History Month, Black History Month, we have to deal with this type of history. Okay. Yes, we yes we talk about 
yes, we have to talk about the history of slavery, but put it into historical perspective, okay? This is, uh, you have to deal with the history before 1441, before the transatlantic slave trade begins. You have to deal with the history before 1526 and the Spanish are taking Africans into the territory we call South Carolina and Georgia. You have to deal with the history before 1619 in, in uh, Virginia. And, and the 20 and odd Africans are uh, on the white lion pirate ship in exchange for food and water and supplies. You, you, we can't start our history conquered by Europeans shackled in chains, okay? Our history doesn't begin there. And if you think that your history starts in, in slavery, you'll mistakenly think anything you do after slavery is somehow a uh, progress. These are the national flags of uh, Corsica and Sardinia, okay? The um, uh, French island uh, of Corsica and the uh, Italian island of Sardinia, they have the Moors heads on them because the Moors are in those areas and it took a monumental effort to conquer the Moors. So they're, they're, they have the Moors, the African Moors heads on their national flags today. When you research this, they still have them on their national flags today. Okay. And then we deal with things like, um, Uh, Christopher, we, we have to deal with Columbus. And one of the books we look at is um, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism. We look at Columbus and what was Columbus searching for? What was his deal with King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella? But, when we, you know, Columbus never comes to the land that we call the United States of America. The closest he comes here is Cuba which is 90 miles away. He never comes to the land that we call the United States of America. Where does he go? His first voyage, 1492, he goes into the Bahamas, what he calls San Salvador, which means Saint Savior. He goes into Cuba, he goes into Hispaniola, and on the western portion of the island of Hispaniola, the western third of the island of Hispaniola, is Santo Domingo or Saint Dominique or what becomes Haiti or Haiti. Okay, Haiti coming from uh, the name from the Taino, Haiti. And then we know that the, um, we know France is going to take over uh, Haiti. Okay, take over, they call, they, they'll, take, they'll take over that Western third called Saint Dominique. And then you know, you have the Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1804, and the Haitians are going to call it uh, Haiti. Those Africans are going to call it Haiti. But because of the Haitian Revolution and because, um, partly because France is spending so much money about to go bankrupt um, fighting the Haitians, they sell the land that they have here, the Louisiana Territory, 828,000 square miles of land for less than three cents an acre. The U.S. buys that for about $15 million. And what this does is this doubles the territory of the U.S. at the time and increases the need for more African slave labor here in the U.S. In the in the because they the U.S. carves out about 15 states out of the territory that they buy from France. Now we know France stole it from Native Americans and African people who were already here. France had France had no uh, like legal claim to it. But because of the uh, increase of land that the US gets, this increases the need for African slave labor in those territories that they decide to have slavery. So we get to see how all these different historical events are connected. And Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, these Caribbean islands that were conquered by Columbus over 500 years ago have never recovered from, from what happened to them. They've never recovered from what Spain did to them. 
they never recover from what Spain did to them or Great Britain. We know that uh, uh, Great Britain takes over Jamaica and colonizes Jamaica. OK, Jamaica, Jamaica, they never recover from that. This is why many of these Caribbean nations are seeking reparations from these European nations, rightfully so. All right. So this is just a brief brief over. There were over, over 200 slides in the class. OK, if you like this type of information, uh, go ahead and register for our online class. We have the link in the thread of this broadcast here. And um, this helps support the African History Network. This helps us stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay the bills. And, and I, the class is on two different digital platforms. I have to pay each month for those platforms. So this helps do. This helps support all of this. The class is on sale only eighty dollars. Regularly one hundred thirty dollars. It's a ten week online class. It takes a lot to. It takes a lot to teach the class. Uh, I teach that class on Saturday. On Sundays, I teach from. Um, Ancient Kim, uh, uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. And that's uh, both classes are 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. each day, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. If you miss class, that's fine. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Not a problem. If you've taken any of my online classes in the past, um, email me at AHN show at African History Network dot com you get a 50% discount. Okay. Now, as soon as you register this content, you can start watching. You can watch last week's class and this bonus content. You, there are also going to be 15 bonus lectures that you get from me when you register from, uh, for understanding the transatlantic slave trade is the, uh, Michael M. Hotep, uh, 15 lecture bundle pack, the black history month bundle pack. You get the lectures in digital download format. OK, so they'll be there because I'm uploading those this weekend. So you get 15 extra lectures. So it's a huge value that you get. Now, you can register for both classes. We have a uh, bundle pack where you can register for both classes for only one hundred and twenty dollars. The classes are regularly two hundred thirty dollars each. We have a bundle pack. You can register for both classes for um, one hundred twenty dollars. OK. And if you've taken any of my online classes before, and I've been teaching these classes since uh, 2017, un un understanding the transatlantic slave trade, I've been teaching that on and off since 2017. And from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, I've been teaching that since uh, 2021. Because there's so much information I had for um, understanding the transatlantic slave trade. There's so much information. I could not get all of it into 10, 11, or 12 weeks. So from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, I had to split that up. Now, see, this is the this is the binder that I use for the second, the second class, where we deal with history from uh we start with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Okay, but this is this is the binder, everything from the Louisiana Purchase to the Missouri Compromise of 1820 to the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, Mexican-American War 1846-1848, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo 1848. We deal with all that in the second class. So, so we can go through and analyze history in, uh, see, Dr. Leonard Jefferson is one of my teachers. So when he teaches history, he teaches history in 50-year increments, okay? So this is where I learned this from. So we go through in each class with uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement, 1865 to 1968. We go through and look at history in 10, 15, 20 year increments. There's a timeline of history that we look at, but then we go through and break this down to understand what led to the Civil War taking place. We look at the Compromise of 1877. We look at like last week, the, the class we just did this past week, we looked at the the uh, the American Nativist Party. That was created around 1854 called the Know Nothings. And this is this is they were created right before the Republican Party was created in 1854 because the Republican Party was created as a backlash to the Kansas Nebraska Act of 1854, which um, allowed um, uh, the, it, it, the territory out west. It left up to the people moving to that territory to determine whether or not they were going to have slavery which infuriated a lot of abolitionists, okay? This allows slavery to spread. And you're going to have 
armed conflict in uh, the Kansas territory called Bleeding Kansas from 1855 to 1859. You have armed conflict between pro-slavery and anti-slavery groups in the Kansas territory. It's called Bleeding Kansas, right? These are events that lead up to the Civil War exploding. The Civil War didn't just happen out of anywhere. They were trying to keep a Civil War from happening going back. When you look at things like the Missouri, the, the Missouri, uh, Missouri Compromise of 1820, which dealt with organizing the land that the U.S. got from the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. And the Missouri Compromise of 1820, uh, it allowed Missouri to come into the Union as a slaveholding state and allowed Maine to come in as a free state because they kept a balance between slaveholding states and free states. So in, uh, in 1820, there was 11 slaveholding states and uh, 11 free states. So they kept a balance. But the Missouri, the Missouri Compromise passes Congress. OK, this is this becomes law, passes Congress and it states that slavery is prohibited in the remaining territories. OK, this is organizing that land that the U.S. got from the Louisiana Purchase. Well, in the Dred Scott decision, March 6, 1857, U.S. Supreme Court's rule, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that the Missouri Compromise of 1820 is unconstitutional. Which nullifies Dred Scott's argument because. Wisconsin was one of the territories that Dred Scott was taken into. Wisconsin was free territory because of the Missouri Compromise. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the Missouri Compromise is unconstitutional. Now, the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 is going to replace the Missouri Compromise. But here you have the judicial branch of the federal government interpreting law from the legislative branch of the federal government. And they nullify Dred Scott's argument. A lot of people say, oh, they said, you know, no black man has a right. Another white man has to uh, uh, honor and uh, black people can, can never be citizens, things like this. They don't they don't read the rest of the ruling. They they rule that the Missouri Compromise is unconstitutional. So that's 1857. Now, that's after the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 became law, which is part of the which is part of the Compromise of 1850, which dealt with five bills to organize the land that the U.S. got from Mexico after the Mexican-American War ended. So we go through history and look and see what leads to the Civil War taking place, 1861-1865, tackle Fort Sumter, April 12, 1861, after Lincoln becomes, wins the presidential election, November 6, 1860. He's the Republican candidate for president. Repub the Republican Party is only six years old. At this time, Republicans, Pu Republican Party wasn't founded until 1854. They're only six years old. Six weeks after Lincoln wins the presidency, becomes president elect, South Carolina becomes the first state to secede from the Union December 20th, 1860. And this, this is going to lead to the Civil War exploding. Then we deal with, with the Reconstruction era, 1865, 1877, which is not taught a lot in schools. And teachers don't really know about the history of Reconstruction. Okay? Teachers really don't know about the history of Reconstruction. Um, so I'm going to show you this, and then we got to get out of here because I have a lot of work to do. And I have to teach two classes this weekend and do a presentation. And I have to do Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday. And I, have to, uh, I do my radio show Sunday night. Uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show. So on Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, but Sundays, we're on 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, so let me close this here. Time Magazine has this piece. I talked, I did a presentation for uh, Tech Town here in Detroit. Um, what was that, Tuesday? Wednesday? Did it Tuesday. Tuesday for Black History Month. I did a presentation for them. I was on a panel discussion dealing with reparations for Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated on Wednesday. Today was my slow day, by the way. Today was my, <laughs> the way this week is going. Thursday was my slow day. Uh, this article right here from Time Magazine. We talked about it before here on the show. This is crucial. A new report finds that 45 states are failing to teach students about the period that shaped race relations after the Civil War. This is dealing with Reconstruction. This article is from January 2022. 
okay, for January 2022, 45 states out of 50 are failing to teach students about uh, reconstruction. And when you read this article, this is from January 12, 2022, one of the things they talk about in here is they connect the, the, viol the political violence during reconstruction targeting African-Americans and white Republicans, but especially African-Americans to keep us from voting, they connect that to the January 6, uh, 2021 insurrection, okay? Which, we, and, and, and that dealt with trying to overturn election results, especially uh, nullify votes from African-Americans. So all this history is connected. Okay, so read that one. All right, so uh, look, we have to get out of here. Uh, so be sure to register for the online courses uh, that I teach. How you all like this type of information? Give us give us a thumbs up on the on the uh, on the broadcast. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like. How you all like this type of type of information? And you can register for uh, the online classes. We posted the link here. If you've taken any of my classes uh, before. Email me at AHN show at African history network.com or the AHN show at gmail.com. You can email me there as well, and uh, you'll get a 50% discount also. And then, uh, also, if you like this type of information, you want to support the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And we have the link there um, in the broadcast here as well. All right, well, look, uh, we have to get out of here. I'll be on Roller Martin Unfiltered on Friday. So uh, you can watch on Facebook and YouTube, uh, Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can download the Black Star Media app and uh, watch there. Download the Black Star Media app to your iPhone, Android phone, to your devices, Roku devices. Uh, so 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm a panelist each Friday on Roland Martin and Filtered. We have to get out of here. Uh, remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. And we'll see you in.